what is up guys this is Tito back with another video on the redmi k20 pro and today in this video i'm gonna be showing you the latest gen x os on this device here is how the android version section looks like on top we of course find the gen x os logo and of course this is the android 10 version not android 11 yet this is the android 10 based gen x os on the redmi k20 pro and if you're noticing the Xenex version over here says 1.10 and the security patch over here is of October 5th, 2020 because the build date of this ROM is 8th October 2020. And here you can see the stock kernel as perf G kernel. In the system panel, this is how it looks like and it has these kind of animations on top. And if you go over here into the update section, you can check for update from here. But let me tell you, it's safer to update it manually, I guess. So that is why I will recommend you updating the ROM manually and if you are flashing this ROM, click on the card right there. You can see the full guide if you are coming from MIUI, how can you flash this ROM. And I have flashed it with the latest firmware which is the Rafael in, in global version 12.0.3. With that firmware, I flashed the ROM file and if clip disabler and I rebooted. You do not need to flash gapps because the gapps is pre-included on this ROM. I think there is also a without gapps version but I have flashed the gapps included version. And in the system panel itself we have this front camera customization kind of thing where you can disable the camera LED then we have this front camera sound effects. These are the MIUI kind of sounds until this cabin door section. And here I am going to demonstrate these kind of three sounds over here of this Star Wars. Let's try this Imperial March. Let's try the Star Wars lightsaber. Sounds cool. Now the Star Wars throne room. That's cool. And the default keyboard over here is Gboard or Google keyboard. And let me show you if I'm playing a song in the background like I just paused it. So right now, as you can see, if I tap the volume button in the volume panel itself, from here I can play this song right here. So yeah, that is really really good and you can like switch to the next track or previous track with this kind of thing over here. It just appears on the volume panel. You can also expand the volume panel just like this from anywhere in the UI. You don't have to be in the system or something. As you can see from anywhere in the UI, you can do that and you can like expand or increase or decrease any volume from here your notification volume or media volume and you can put the phone into vibrant or silent from here also there is a live caption mode so yeah everything is there now talking about the stock launcher this is the launcher launcher present by default over here and let me show you this is how the home screen looks like of course to the left of the home screen we do have this google's discover page and of course the launcher launcher has a huge amount of customizations other than that let me show you we do have this widgets working so i do not have any issues with the widget swiping up gets you to the app drawer swiping down gets you to the like quick settings panel over here and i'll show you the quick settings panel later on but right now let me just go into the settings of course launcher launcher has huge amount of customizations as you can see you can customize the themes the desktop at a glance dock drawer search plugins etc and in the gestures we have all these kind of gestures like double tap and touch and hold home button tap back button tap swipe down swipe up everything you can customize from here and of course i have just changed the double tap to sleep so right here let me actually show you i can just double tap and the phone goes to sleep right now let me just quickly show you the few mid scanner speed from the always on display and as you can see it unlocked pretty fast let me show you with the left hand thumb as you can see it still unlocks now i'll try from the lock screen and it still unlocks now let's try one more time from the lock screen and as you can see the fingerprint scanner is very much reliable over here i had no issues with the fingerprint scanner on this rom now let me quickly show you the quick settings panel now and here is how it looks like again and i have added a couple of toggles like the screen recorder and the fps counter but let me actually show you you can edit and add more toggles from here as you can see there are a plethora of options of the quick toggles you can see it from the screen and right here let me actually show you this is not the oxygenous kind of screen recorder but it does have this audio source changing option to internal or microphone or you can change the video bitrate up to 20 mbps then we have this show touch on screen and stuff this is a basic screen recorder i would say and here with this fps counter as you can see right now i have enabled it and on top on the left side you can see the screen fps so yeah while gaming and stuff this might help you and you can use this fps counter if you want to 
The only thing that I do not like over here on this Xenix OS is what used to be there and they still did not fix it. What is it? Well, let me actually show you. If I go into the Zen Hub, of course, this is the customization section where you will go like most of the time or for a custom ROM, I would say the customization panels are really important. And here, let me actually show you if I go into the status bar section, let's assume I'm willing to go to the like back panel or like if I go back, I am willing to see the whole customization section, right? So if I go back like this, it goes to the settings. And here, let me actually show you if I go into this set, like status bar settings again, and if I go back with this arrow, even then I go back to the settings, not this particular area. This bug still is there. I don't know why they don't fix it. But yeah, this is really weird and I don't really like it. The stock camera of this ROM is the Google Camera Go. Well, yeah, it's not like something very much interesting, but yeah, it's not too boring either. In my opinion, you can see how many photos you can take and stuff like that. And the front camera and stuff is working super fine here with even portrait mode. It should work fine with even video mode and stuff. You can see how much for how long you can like shoot video off. So yeah, this Google camera go is pretty basic one, but yeah, it does work fine every time. So that is good. I have also installed Google camera Yonix version, the full version you can say with night sight and stuff. This works flawlessly with all the lenses and with this you can like get all the lenses of course. And if you want to install this particular Google camera, you can click on the card right there. But of course, with the Google camera go, you cannot switch to your other camera lenses. So that is one bummer that you have with this Google camera go. And for the people who wants to install actually the MIUI or ANX camera on any ROM right now, because most of the ROMs are coming with Google camera go, I would say just flash the version 185 of the ANX camera and flash the version 181 of the 48 megapixel fix and you can reboot. Then after rebooting, just go to the apps info of the ANX camera and just give permission to the camera and location and storage and stuff like that. After that, full stop the app once, then you can like restart your device or you can just like restart the app and it should be working fine. This is how the stock dialer or the stock in-call UI looks like and as you can see it says Wi-Fi call on Geo. So yeah, Wi-Fi calling on Geo at least is working fine and you can see with Vio LTE icon there is the Wi-Fi icon right there. They do work fine most of the time I have seen but there is no call recording option in the stock dialer. That is what I'm kind of disappointed about but yeah, I'm okay with it. Now in terms of customizations, I would say this is one of the most customizable ROMs that I have seen right now at least you can get like this status bar sliding to like adjust the brightness and stuff and then we have the double tap to sleep of course on the status bar and then you can customize this area like the MIUI kind of brightness panel let me actually show you in the status bar settings now this is brightness control double tap to sleep battery percentage next to the icon or something like that network speed carrier label logo and notification count bluetooth battery status does appear over here again and you can also have this view only or like view Wi-Fi icon or Vaulty icon. I mean, sorry, you can have this these kind of Vaulty icons or you can have these many like view Wi-Fi icons. You can change it to MUI or something or Asus. So yeah, really a lot of options for view Wi-Fi kind of icons too, like Vaulty and view Wi-Fi icons. If you are into that, this is a perfect ROM for you. And inside status bar items, we have the headset Bluetooth extra icons. Those are working fine. And in the quick settings panel, we of course have the column and row number customization. Let me reduce the brightness just a little bit. And here we have the header image customization. Then quick setting header accent based right now, it is set. You can set it to default, transparent, custom color, everything else. Quick setting blur is there. Then quick setting tint style or the tile style. Then we have the quick pull down, smart pull down, etc. Auto brightness adjustment. Then we have the quick setting battery kind of thing everything else like yeah i don't even know how many things are there as you can see there are a plethora of things like haptic feedback and stuff let me go back okay so it goes back there again in the notifications we have the blink for call waiting and stuff notification ticker the heads up should be there of course as you can see there is a separate panel for heads up over here so you can customize the heads up notifications and inside lock screen i would say the only feature that is missing from this rom i would say is the always unlock with the finger image scanner except for that everything is there and there are like very interesting features and here as you can see we have this lock screen animations too so this is like the ongoing animation all the time with the like lock screen animation and we have this show this on aod and stuff like that charging info charging 
animation and stuff is there you can also change the charging animation so that is very cool and we have this pocket detection etc and here we have the icon customizer these are the like fingerprint scanner icons over here you can choose from these many icons and here we have this fod pressed icon color and the default one is MIUI Cyan, so I've been using that. And you can change the recognizing animation for this like fingerprint scanner icon. Plethora of like animations for the fingerprint scanner unlocking animations are there. Let me scroll down. We have this show DND info and stuff. Then show lock icon, quick settings, ambient customization is there, edge lighting option is there, light duration, light repeat count and stuff is there. Let me go back and here we have the navigation section. We have the pulse navigation. The gestures and here we do have this three finger screenshot gesture and as you can see this is the asus kind of screenshot gesture i don't know it keeps making the sound whenever i take a screenshot even though my phone is in silent mode i don't know if there is option to like disable the sound but this is the asus kind of screenshot as you can see you can take long edit and share the screenshot or delete it from here then we have this arrow animation and inside power we do have the advanced reboot and stuff and let me actually show you this is how the power menu looks like you can tap advanced and you can directly reboot to recovery or fast boot from this option and we have this volume panel and you can change the timeout for the volume panel if you want it to stay there for longer period of time as you can see it stays there or as you can see there is the answer call and stuff like that let me go back from here and inside user interface we have the dark theme and styles and wallpapers is there this is the normal kind of thing Lock screen presets are there if you want to change it to anything else. As you can see, plethora of lock screen presets are there. Then we have this accent kind of preset and you can change this accent color preset. I have set it to Twitter blue. As you can see, there is the RGB color picker too. So you can pick from any kind of color over here. Then we have this switch style. This is the toggle style of the UI. You can change it and the volume panel customization is there. And as you can see, you can have these many volume panels. There is a stock AOSP, AOSP compact audio and the tiled option. Then we have some gradient strokes and stuff like that. You can add this like some padding on top and stuff like that. As you can see, there is a volume panel like alignment. You can set it to top and right now as you can see the volume panel appears on the top. These are the like very like much customization as you can see. You can have it on the bottom for convenience pretty much. Then we have this media card set full width and stuff. Then we have this ring notification alarm etc volume. There is the status bar dual row so you can have the notification and system bar as well. Then we have the status bar height and stuff. Then dashboard customization is there, show device parts option is there. And here inside the screen we have the like screen padding option. So you can add some padding and system UI animation is there. The whole UI user interface animations are there. Let me go into the MISC settings. We have the charging animation, wake up device disabling option, screenshot type, you can change it from here. And then there is the adaptive playback and stuff like that. Then we have this device parts. And from here you can also of course have the, the camera kind of sounds, which is there in the system settings. And in the battery settings, this is how it looks like. We have this ultra power saving mode Then smart charging and stuff is there. The battery cycle does show up over here on the bottom. Then we have the current battery capacity and the design battery capacity. Then we have the battery temperature and stuff. Screen on time is there and I would say in terms of battery life, this one definitely gives really great battery life. Almost for 10% if it gives one hour of screen on time. Like as you can see right now, I have one and a half hours of screen on time and the juice is almost 86% left. So you can calculate that and right now as you can see, so it did give me about seven to eight hours of screen on time on overall usage. I had no issues with the battery life on this room and also 18 watt fast charging works flawlessly no issues with that in the display settings this is how it looks like we have the brightness level adaptive or auto brightness night light etc is there screen timeout lock screen timeout both are there screen attention mode is there display calibration mode is there so you can change the colors to boosted and then we have the like live kind of display mode from where you can calibrate the colors whole rgb of the screen you can calibrate let me go back and here we have the display cutout then ambient display options are there and there is the dc dimming mode it should work fine let me go back to the sounds and here we have the live caption then the audio dirac is there so i have set it to youth edition from here you can also have hi-fi audio preset then we have the sound presets and you can have anything else set if you are gonna use that i would say with this youth edition itself the sound output has been great with the headphone jack over here and even with bluetooth i would say the volume is great and the sound quality of this rom is like quite amazing i did not have any issues with the sound quality on this rom 
and here if i scroll down we have this okay so the screenshot sound was there i did not see it i'm sorry for that so right now if i take a screenshot as you can see it does not make the sound so yeah in the sound settings you can disable the screenshot sound here inside vibration and haptics we have the in call vibration vibrate for calls vibrate for notifications if you want to just disable the vibrate for notifications you can do that and ringtone vibration pattern you can change it from here now inside security we do have this app lock and face unlock as well so let me actually show you the app lock this is the like same app lock like you find in most roms today so as you can see right now i just tap fingerprint scanner and the app unlocks so this is very cool and if i go back and from the recent panel i cannot see the app's content because that feature is hidden like there is option to hide the app contents on this kind of like app over here so if you open the app after 50 seconds you have to enter like pin or your fingerprint scanner you have to assign again you if you want to like go into the locked app or if you open it right away it will open like i just tap the fingerprint scanner right now and right now if i go home and right now i just open the app and it still opens without asking you for the fingerprint or any pin currently let me set up the face unlock and see if the face unlock works so right now let me just double tap on the home screen and i'll just double tap over here so i'm swiping up right now as you can see the face unlock did work fine but i have to swipe up currently as you can see again i have to swipe up then it pops out the front camera and it unlocks and there is the option to swipe to unlock if i disable that right now if i try the face unlock from here as you can see right now i do not have to swipe up as soon as i double tap on the screen it wakes up the screen as well as it pops up the front camera and unlocks the device so if you want to use this you can do that but if your device is in pocket let me actually show you over here so yeah of course if your device is in pocket it will show a uh, like message like this press and hold power button to unlock and stuff like that so i cannot double tap right now and it won't accidentally like pop out the front camera in your pocket if even if you have like this swipe up unlocking feature turned off and by the way the app lock also works with the face unlock as you can see right now it unlocks with uh, like face unlock so yeah that is very good the face unlock also works for the app lock itself and the daily driving performance i would say has been really really great i did not have any issues in the ui but yeah i did notice some minor stutters here and there in the ui but other than that like the ui almost stayed fluid all the time some more things to talk about here is the drm info shows as level 1 over here as you can see so you can stream netflix or amazon prime in 1080p over here right out of the box you do not need to worry about those and it passes the safety net test as you can see fully so you can use banking apps right out of the box too and you do not have to flash magic or something to use banking apps over here i did try google pay it does work fine right out of the box and if you want to see the benchmarks of this rom here are the antutu and geekbench score of this rom so let me know in the comments what do you guys think thank you so much for watching this video guys give it a thumbs up if you liked it subscribe to the channel if you have not yet this is tiro from kdn tech signing off for today i'll be catching you guys in the next one Bye now.